Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a chess puzzle today. This is a chess puzzle that I did over at chess.com and I got it wrong. I posted it to my Facebook and several other people had trouble with it. This is a wonderful chess puzzle. Chess.com has the absolute best tactical trainer online. I highly recommend it to students. It is Chess Puzzle 0110247 in case you want to check it out over there. I strongly recommend that you start by looking at this puzzle, giving it less than five minutes, and seeing if you can come up with the best line for white. Then I will be back and I'll go over my logic and the answer to it and why this puzzle is so interesting to me. Okay, we're back. Uh, in looking at the position, the first thing you want to look at is what's going on materially. Material looks to be even. Uh, there is a very vulnerable king on both sides of the board. Let's actually go back one move so we can see the last move for black. Right here, black is actually winning. They're doing really well, but they missed a really cool tactic and they move their king towards the center of the board. They were thinking that this is an end game, and there's still a lot of pieces on the board. King safety is still something to worry about. Uh, back here, Black's best move was just to grab this pawn. Even though the other pawn can take back, then the rook comes down with check, and we have a crushing position for Black. Otherwise, they just have to ignore this pawn and black is just simply up a pawn in this position. Unfortunately, black made the mistake of moving the king towards the center of the board and runs into some king safety issues here. Now, in calculating this, after looking at the general state of the board and the material situation, you start to calculate checks, captures, then forcing moves. No checks here for white, so we're on to captures. There's two really logical captures here. One of them is to take the rook, the other is to take the bishop. I calculated the bishop for a significant period of time. It ends up being a very equal trade. It gets rid of some of the pressure, but white still has some dominant pawns in the center of the board. Let's take a quick look at what happens if you take the bishop. The best take back here is queen b6, stabilizing the position, and I would call this dead even, although I would rather be playing white side because of those advanced pawns. Black technically has a little bit more material because of the rook here in the center of the board. The next move to look at is taking the rook, and this is where it gets really, really interesting. Once you take the rook, the only logical play for black is to take back, trying to keep the position equal, and then queen c2 is the best move in the position. It hits this weak pawn over here on f5, and it hits the back rank while simultaneously looking at the vulnerable position of the black king. Black is not able to deal with the threats to the back rank up here to c6 and to f5 all at the same time. I looked at this position for a while and had trouble finding a winning line for white, which is what makes this such an interesting tactical game. If black, for example, simply plays g6 to try to hold on to the pawn, um, white is able to come in, attack the bishop and the pawn, winning the pawn rather quickly, but it looks like black may have stabilized. The important part here, though, is that these pawns are monsters, and they give a significant endgame advantage to white. Now, this position is not simple by any means. There are many opportunities for white to really screw it up here. If white tries to come in and harass the black king with queen e8, the weak dark squares around the white king are going to cause a serious problem here. We're looking at mate in a few moves with no way for white to prevent it. Once the king gets over to the side here, he's relatively safe, and this bishop and queen together make a crushing mating battery down here in the corner. Now, you're thinking, wait, I thought white was winning, and white is winning, uh, but what I really missed in this position 
was the option to transition into an end game that is crushing for white. Queen e5 is the move that really brings this position together. It forces the exchange of queens and gives white this incredible end game. The black king is basically out of the game, and the white king can march all the way into the center. White is basically up the equivalent of a piece because of how powerful these central pawns are and the fact that the white king has a lot more mobility in this position. It's very difficult for black to hold the position together. This is kind of a typical sequence of moves where white improves his position in the end game and then starts to make threats that black cannot deal with. These pawns are going to get rolling and turn into a queen and just end the game right away. So the other move that really needs to be calculated here is bishop b8 right away which gives up this pawn and allows white to destroy the king side while simultaneously making mating threats. This line is easier to calculate through because it doesn't have that same transition into a winning end. I hope this was useful. Enjoy this chess puzzle. Um, if you want to get better at tactics, I strongly recommend checking out chess.com. Uh, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. I do also teach chess if you are interested in chess lessons and happen to be in the Seattle area. I only do lessons in person. Uh, please contact me at brian at brianrowe.org. Thank you.